given a differentiable function on some domain, f, and let's say for simplicity that this is an open domain in Rn, and here is some domain in Rm, we want to actually understand a little bit more deeply what the differential is. So again, let's assume that the function is differentiable so that we don't have to worry about whether it exists at all points. So let's assume from scratch that f is differentiable. And how can we visualize what the differential actually does? So if we have some point, let's say x, in our domain, then x gets mapped to some image point, f of x. The differential at the point x gives us a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. How can we view this linear transformation? Well, because its domain is all of Rn, imagine sticking some kind of a plane whose origin is at the point x. So here's a copy of Rn. So we have this plane st sticking stuck to the point x. And we know that we get a function. And this function is the differential of f at x. Then we get mapped to another plane under this differential to Rm. And let's say that looks something like this. This is just the schematic picture. Of course, these planes are infinite in extent, regardless of how small a is, as long as a is open. Now, what does the differential do? If we have some vector, let's say here, then the image of this vector gets sent to another vector, let's say over there. And this vector, no matter what it is, its origin, again, is the point x. And here, the origin of that vector is f of x. And if we have, let's say, a, let's, let's imagine that we take the unit vectors, e1 and e2. I drew this a little bit awkwardly. I should have drawn e1 in this direction and e2 that way, but whatever. It doesn't really matter. So here I have this very nice square grid uh, given by these vectors. I've also messed up the grid a little bit, but that's OK. You get the idea that the unit vectors in Rn give us a grid. And imagine that m here, just for illustrative purposes, is the same as n, so that it's easy to draw this picture. What happens to these unit vectors as I apply this differential to them? Well, as any linear transformation, it sort of moves these vectors around. And as long as the determinant of this linear transformation is not 0, then two linearly independent vectors remain linearly independent. So I have some new vectors here, and I get a new, um, I get some sort of a new uh, coordinate system on the image based on the image of these two vectors. Now, this picture happens for every single point on which the differentials define. That means for every x, I have such a linear transformation. In other words, if I take a and x is an element of a, I will get a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. So we get some linear transformation, which is a linear, and to emphasize linear, we write this as HOM. And the target is Rm, and the domain is Rn. The reason we write the domain on the right is because we'll be thinking of, vector, is, of arrows as going from right to left. So what we get is a function. And this function is a function from A to HOM of R N to R M. And we denote this function by D box F. So for every function F, we can calculate its differential. 
again, assuming it's differentiable, which we will throughout this entire video, uh, then we'll get such a linear transformation for every single one of these points. So this is kind of related to thinking of partial derivatives. Indeed, if we took a fixed direction, so imagine that we now were in this context, and we, so here's our a, and imagine taking the unit vectors at every single one of these points. So imagine sticking at every single x in our domain such a unit vector. So we have all of these unit vectors everywhere. Let's say they're pointing, you know, they're all in the same direction. We're just using the standard basis and we're looking at these unit vectors all over A and so on. And the partial derivative, so let's say that these are EI. The partial derivative is very closely related to this function. How do you get the partial derivative from this? We can look at this function and instead of plugging in x right away, so we're going to think of as x as being a variable, we'll plug in the unit vector ei everywhere. So we'll write ei here. Now what exactly do I mean by this? This is a function from a to, what is it should be a function from? From a to rm. What function is it, just so we're clear with the notation, if I take an element x in a, then that gets sent to dxf ei. In other words, this is the partial derivative of f in the ith direction. Well, f could be an m component vector, so if m was 1, that's what it would be. Um, so let me write that if m equals 1. Then this is dif evaluated at x. And we know that the partial derivative is a function from our domain to, our, uh, to the codomain. So this is consistent with something we're already familiar with. But again, we don't have to necessarily specify a vector here which direction we want to calculate the derivative in. We can leave that as a variable as we've done here. Just as we can plug in any x over here, Imagine you can plug in a varying vector here, not just a unit vector in the ith direction, but imagine that as you vary the point x, the vector can also change. It makes sense to still evaluate this at that vector because the differential exists everywhere. So for instance, we can imagine that we have some collection of vectors all over our set A. And these vectors can vary as a function of x in A. And it makes sense to consider, so let me call this, if this is x, then this is V subscript x, just so that I remember that I also have a bunch of vectors that depend on x. It makes sense to evaluate this differential, which again exists at every point x, at Vx this is going to be an element of Rm. All I'm doing is I'm taking the derivative of f and taking it in the direction Vx. And I'm doing this for every element in the domain of the function. This is an example of a vector field. And a special case of a vector field is exactly this straight constant vector field here. And it motivates the definition that a vector field on a subset A of Rn is just a function of the form V from A to Rn. And that's all a vector field is. And Next time we'll talk about how you can use vector fields in exactly this way to take derivatives of functions, not necessarily in a fixed direction at the same constant magnitude every single time, but you have the flexibility of differentiating a function differently at a neighboring point than at a point that you started at.